Hello, Bookish fam. Happy Slayer Fest day one. It is Saturday, April 1st, and it's the perfect day to start the first reading vlog. I'm going to attempt to do weekly reading vlogs throughout Slayer Fest, no matter how short they are. Y'all know that I live a fairly boring average life. I work Monday through Friday. I go to the gym. I come home. I cook. I clean. And then I go to bed. There's usually not anything exciting or noteworthy going on during the week, but I promise to do my best to give you some content to watch, and I plan on uploading these as my third video every single Sunday. So that is the plan. It is currently about 2.30 in the afternoon, and and it has been very, very busy today so far. You will likely have seen some of the B-roll footage that I included at the very beginning. I started the morning kind of relaxing, editing a video that I have going up tomorrow, did some chores, and then my husband and I went out to Lowe's because we picked up some trees and flowers that we are going to be planting today and tomorrow. And then we just got home a little bit ago, had some lunch, finished exporting that same video that I was editing. My house is a complete and total disaster, so I need to work on that later tonight, but now we have to get to the actual planting. But I wanted to go ahead and just come on here and say hi, open up this vlog, tell you what the reading plans are. So the very first two prompts that you have to satisfy for this readathon are Buffy and then the basic vamp. And so for Buffy to read a book featuring a badass female protagonist, I'm going to be reading Crest by Marissa Meyer. I have actually already started that book. And then I will be reading Out of the Dust for the basic vampire because it is a middle grade novel that is completely written in verse. So that will definitely be a short, quick read. It is only two hours on audio. So what I hope to do is just turn it on today and just bust it out in basically one go while I'm cleaning up my disaster of a house. So that is what we're going to do. That is the plan. I mean, technically I'm supposed to finish Crest first because I'm supposed to finish the Buffy prompt, be strong enough to beat the basic vampire and then move on. But Out of the Dust is literally so short. I don't think I'm going to be able to help but complete it super quick. So that is the plan, but I'm not going to be able to do any listening until we get the trees planted. So that is what I'm going to go ahead and do and I'll check in in a bit. Hey y'all, sorry for the harsh lighting. It is definitely much later. It is about nine o'clock. So I'm going to start like winding down and getting ready for bed and everything. But I did want to let you know that I have finished Out of the Dust by Karen Hesse. I feel a little bit weird about trying to review the book and giving it a rating. It's just because it is so outside my comfort zone. It is definitely not something I would have ever picked up before. And the only reason why I picked it up now is just because of reading challenges. So I definitely didn't go into this book expecting to love it. You know, I just wanted to kind of get through it. And because of that, I feel like I'm already going into it with low expectations. I will say though, that as much as you can possibly get into a book that is only like two hours of listening time and is written completely in freeform verse, I feel like it was a really solid and touching kind of story. You're dealing with a 14 year old girl girl who is living in the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma, which was very trying, traumatic times. If you've read The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, you'll kind of know a lot more about what I'm talking about. And you get a lot of the same vibes from just this really short middle grade novel. It's one of those stories where you can just kind of like see and feel the dust coating everything in your lungs. The desperation for water, the dying cattle, the dying crops, like everything is just desolate during this time. And I feel like this short little book did a really good job of portraying that. And so even though it's definitely not something that I was emotionally connected to or anything like that. It was something that I was able to kind of get absorbed into. It was something that was really able to hold my attention the entirety of the time. So even though it's not my thing, even though I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. I'm not mad that I read it and it already satisfies one of the Slayer Fest prompts. So that is definitely not something to be mad about and it also satisfies a lot of other challenges that I'm doing. So I'm going to call it a win. I have not been able to listen to Cress at all today because we were so busy. So tomorrow, if I do any listening, it's definitely going to be of Cress trying to bust through that tomorrow and probably Monday. It is a fairly long audiobook. I think if I remember correctly, it is about 15 hours, which is on the longer side for any book, but especially like a YA. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it tomorrow because I don't listen as much to audiobooks on the weekend as I do during the week. But that's really the only thing that I've got going now is Cress. And so once I've completed Cress, I will have officially completed my first pairing of Buffy and the basic vampire. So, so far we are off to a really, really strong start for the readathon. Tomorrow, I don't have anything going on. Tomorrow is a filming day, so I'm going to film a couple of videos because we got home later in the afternoon and my husband has D&D &D tonight. We didn't get a chance to do all the planting that we wanted. We just planted those two trees and then we have a couple of flowers that we're going to plant in pots and things. So that's going to happen tomorrow. And then Sundays really is a chore day. All the laundry has to be done and things like that. Not to mention I have to start editing the videos that I filmed because I have one that goes up on Tuesday. So I don't know how many clips I'm actually going to have tomorrow, but I will definitely come on here and give an update if I have read anything and have something to update you on of course. But that's the plan for tomorrow. I hope that the readathon is off to a really strong start for y'all like it is for me. I hope that you guys are having a good time so far. Please also don't forget to like tag me in the content. Oh, that's an Archibald head. Archibald wants snuggles. It is just snuggle time. Oh, pfft. 
Guess not. Actually, he's got chaos in his eyes right now. Uh, but yes, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting ready for bed and I will check in with y'all a little bit later. Hi friends, it is currently Monday, April 3rd in the morning. I am about to head into work, but I just wanted to pop on and give you a quick update. I am almost done with reading Cress, which again, is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles. I have about an hour and 10 minutes of listening time. I hope to be able to finish it before I get home, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But either way, I will finish it like while I'm cooking dinner or something like that. So it will 100% be finished tonight and I am absolutely loving it. I obviously can't really tell you much about what is happening in the series because it would risk spoilers for book one and two, but we are at a point in the series where it's just basically like nonstop action. Things are happening, moves are being made, and I'm really, really enjoying the ride. It's one of those situations where I just kind of want to keep reading because I want to know what happens because the stakes are kind of high right now and I want to see what is going to happen. The Lunar Chronicles, if you're not familiar, is a young adult sci-fi series of retelling. So the first book, Cinder is a Cinderella retelling and then you have Scarlet which was a Little Red Riding Hood retelling. Cress is a Rapunzel retelling and then Winter the final book is going to be a Snow White retelling and they are just all done so fantastically and so far I think Cress is like one of my favorites even though she's she's probably not my favorite character overall like main lead character but I'm just overall loving the whole story and I'm really interested to see how it progresses. My goal is to complete the series this year. So even though I don't necessarily think I will be finishing the series during Slayer Fest, it is going into my challenge cup as a book that I want to read. And so there's every opportunity for me to pull it during one of like my TBR games or something like that. Day three of the readathon, we are about to finish the second book. And the plan immediately after finishing Crest is to start Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young, which will satisfy the prompt of Willa the Wicca to read a witchy read. That came in from my library several days ago. So I definitely need to go ahead and get it read before I have to return it. But for now y'all it is time to start the week at work I've got some things that I need to take care of so I will check in with you when I have finished Cress. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful, you and me we meant to be Outdoors, forever free. Hey y'all, so it is actually really windy out here. I don't know how badly that's going to affect the sound on this video. If it affects it too much, I'm probably gonna like have to scrap this clip, but I'm just out on my lunch break taking a walk and I thought I would just come on here and update you really quick because I did end up finishing Crest last night. Really, really enjoyed it. We are definitely getting to the climax of the series. I know that book number four is probably going to be really explosive and I'm looking forward to getting into it. And so then last night, I briefly, briefly started Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young and then continued continued with it this morning on my commute to work. I'm still very early on into the story. I am only about 11%, so I'm definitely still wading in and trying to figure out the world and the characters. But from what I understand, this is taking place on a Pacific Northwest island called Sersha. And it's definitely a very magical island. It has deeply rooted magical history that runs through like all the women on the island. So I'm definitely getting like Summer of Salt vibes by Katrina Leno only for adults. You definitely are getting the atmospheric vibes that Summer of Salt gave, as well as like Shay Earnshaw atmosphere as well so I'm loving that so far. It's following our main character Emery Blackwood as well as our main character August Salt and we don't quite know yet what happened but 14 years prior to the start of the story something tragic happened that drove August and his mom off of the island and I believe that August and Emery were once together and she hasn't seen him in 14 years since this tragedy occurred but now he is returning to the island to bury his mom basically and things are just about to go down because Emery has just now learned that August is back on the island so I'm really excited to get back into it like I said it is very atmospheric. I want to know kind of like what happened in the past and what's going to go down in the future and kind of what the overall plot of the story is supposed to be like it's supposed to be a second chance romance between the two what role is the magic going to play in this story so we're gonna see but that's really all the update that i have for you right now so i will come back and give you more updates once i have them guys my hibiscus bloomed isn't it beautiful it's called a hollywood hibiscus 
Ooh, so beautiful. Hey y'all, I am just about to go into the gym, but I realized that I didn't update you at all today and I'm significantly farther into Spells for Forgetting. In fact, I am over halfway done. I would love to finish it tonight, but I have about two and a half hours left and I just don't think that I'm gonna have enough opportunity to finish it, but I will definitely finish it probably tomorrow morning. So as I mentioned in the other clip, if it's part of this vlog, it was really windy when I filmed it, so I don't know if it's included or not. But basically this book is set on an island in the Pacific Northwest, like just off of the Washington coast. And this is an island that definitely has deep roots. Like a lot of the families that have been there have been there for a really long time. So there's a lot of history and it is definitely like a magical island. The magic in here has not been clearly defined. I'm getting the sense that the island has some type of sentience, like, like it knows when things are about to go wrong and things like that and it reacts accordingly. But it's only just been hinted at about the magical properties of the island and the magical properties of the women on the island. Like it's not a huge part of the story as of yet. But basically a lot of the commerce that happens on this island is surrounding this one apple orchard. It's a tourist destination so people will hop on the ferry, they'll go out to the island so that they could pick apples and things like that and they also frequent a lot of the stores that are on the island and 14 years prior to the start of this novel there was a huge fire in the orchard and on that same day a girl named Lily was found dead and Lily was the best friend of our main character Emery and a lot of the people on the island think that August Salt killed Lily and August was Emery's boyfriend. So needless to say this was a really trying time because the orchard had been burnt to the ground so the island in itself was affected physically emotionally and things like that they were damaged economically and then you have this murder of this beloved girl on this very small island where everybody knows one another Emery's boyfriend is being accused and so he and his mom just one day take off and leave the island like they cannot stay there anymore and so naturally this has really big ramifications for Emery who was deeply in love with August August was deeply in love with her but she's basically spent the past 14 years without August but now August is having to return to Sersha because he has to bury his mom there his mom has recently passed away and one of her dying wishes was to be buried on Sersha and naturally him coming back to the island is stirring up a lot of really painful memories for a lot of people there. There are definitely people on the island who didn't think that August was capable of doing something like that, Emery included. So there are a lot of people there who were loyal to August and have definitely paid for that loyalty over time and then of course there are those people that staunchly thought that he was guilty including the officer on that island who just happens to be Emery's uncle and August's former kind of stepdad type figure because he was dating August's mom. So there's a lot of complicated family dynamics relationships on this island because like I said it is a small island. It has a very very deep history. It's kind of one of those places where like outsiders aren't really welcome or things like that. I think what we're going to start seeing as the story progresses is answers to the mysteries like who actually killed Lily. I think we're going to start getting some answers to a lot of these things. So far I am very much loving this. I'm loving the vibes. I'm loving the mystery aspect. I'm loving the minor magical elements because that's what's adding the atmosphere to the story. So so far this is really well written and I'm really digging it and like I said I probably won't finish it tonight but I will definitely finish it tomorrow and as soon as I've finished it and have like formalized my feelings on it I will let you know but for now it's gym time
Hello Bookish fam. It is Friday, April 7th. I am currently off work because of Good Friday and I've just spent a lot of the morning being as productive as humanly possible. I spent the morning preparing for some upcoming videos that I hope to film this weekend. I was also working on editing this vlog that has to go up on Sunday as well as, you know, standard cleaning the kitchen, doing the laundry, cleaning up my library because it's been getting pretty neglected recently. It's for the most part all nice and fresh. I still have a few more things to do, which I'll probably get done now because I'm editing but I'm falling asleep. Like I'm feeling that afternoon slump and I need to stay awake because I have to leave in about, I don't know, maybe two hours or less to go ahead and go to the gym. Then we're going out to dinner tonight with my best friend and her husband because it's his birthday. And then we might run some errands afterwards. I don't know, but I'm going to have very few other opportunities to get this stuff done today. But I just wanted to come on here and give a brief update because I did end up finishing Spells for Forgetting yesterday like I originally said that I was going to. Ultimately, I really enjoyed the story overall. I very much enjoyed the atmosphere, the witchy vibe. Overall, I would say the core of the story is a mystery. You know, you're trying to find out what actually happened 14 years prior to Lily. How was she killed? Who killed her? Was August really guilty? And throughout this mystery, there's a lot of things that are uncovered, a lot of secrets, a lot of betrayals. And it was just a really enjoyable ride to kind of work through and kind of figure out what happened. The only real maybe complaint that I have, but it's not really, is that the ultimate ending kind of felt a little bit abrupt. I felt like there were some things that could have used a bit more closure, not out of necessity like you just kind of know where things stand by the end of it but I did feel like it was a little bit abrupt but still overall a very very solid reading experience I gave it a four stars and I'm absolutely excited to read more from Adrienne Young in the adult range so that book satisfied the Slayerfest prompt of Willow to read a witchy read and now I'm moving on to the next big bad which is Kathy Newman to read a book that's outside of my comfort zone for this I'm reading a nonfiction memoir called When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Calathini I am actually almost done with this story it is not a long story at all it was only about six hours total and I listened on two times speed so that was three hours of listening in total. I ended up starting it last night very briefly, listened to a lot more of it today and I have maybe an hour of listening time left. So in theory I could bust it out probably before I even leave for the gym today but if not I will 100% finish it on my way to the gym and then that will satisfy the second pairing for the readathon. Again as I mentioned it is a non-fiction memoir about Paul who is like a neurosurgeon and what happens when he is diagnosed with a cancer that ends up being terminal and how he comes like face to face with his own mortality and how he deals with that and being on the other side of like the doctor patient relationship you get a little bit of his background he was a very educated well-spoken man I think it's just going to be like a reflection on life and the purpose of life and what to do when you know that you are going to die I imagine it gets to be a pretty emotional read but overall for me right now it's just kind of interesting I'm just I'm waiting for it to kind of get to the point where it makes it a five star you know like this book is consistently rated like five stars everybody loves this and I think it was like the Goodreads Choice Award for memoir in like 2016 to 2017. So this is a highly praised book. And the reason why it was on my radar in the first place, because I do not normally read nonfiction memoirs. And I certainly don't read nonfiction memoirs of somebody like I've never heard of before that I have no investment in, but it was just so highly praised and it just sounded beautiful and kind of philosophical. And that's what really drew my attention to it. So I'm going to finish that today. So right now I think I'm going to go get up, do more chores, do more listening, and I'll check in with you a little bit later. Hello friends. It is Saturday, April 8th, and it is officially time to wrap up this vlog. The goal is for me to have the vlogs run Saturday through Friday and then be able to get them up for you on Sundays. So I didn't have an opportunity to wrap it up last night. So here we are wrapping it up today. I did finish When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. That's how you pronounce his name, Kalanithi. And I don't really have much to say about it. I'm not going to give it a rating. I feel weird kind of rating it because, you know, this is this person's personal experience and he did pass away of cancer. And so this was his own way of kind of coming face to face with his own mortality and dealing with that and what it means. It was very cerebral and very existential, you know, kind of pondering what the meaning of life is. I did really enjoy like the medical aspects of the story, kind of diving more deeply into the world because he was a neurosurgeon and he definitely does have a unique viewpoint because he's used to being on the opposite side of that doctor-patient spectrum. I would say, honestly, my favorite part was actually the epilogue, which was written by his wife, his widow. And I thought that it was just very beautiful and touching as she reflected on her life with him and who he was as a person and his brave fight through cancer and his urge to kind of write and share his story. So I thought that was really nice. Is this something that's going to stick with me? Unfortunately, no, but I'm not mad that I read it. And as I mentioned previously, this is actually one that has been on my TBR for a while just because I had heard so many amazing things about it. And I liked the idea of the subject matter that it covered because it's not necessarily something that you see very often. And so I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. And it is not only another book that is knocked off my TBR, but it is another Slayer Fest prompt satisfied as well as other reading 
writing challenge prompts have been satisfied as well. I have now moved on to the next book, which is The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain. This is not one that was originally part of my Slayer Fest TBR. It is one that I pulled as a challenge prompt for my April TBR, and it has come in from my library, and so I wanted to go ahead and read it. I will be able to go ahead and use this for the Dawn prompt, so I'm going to go ahead and boot Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano and use this instead. I feel like I'm very early days into this story, but from what I'm able to follow, this follows our main character, Riley, I think her name is, and she is returning to her hometown area because her father has recently passed away. It is up to her to settle his estate, clear out his house, put it on the market and everything like that. And then there's another aspect to it that we haven't gotten into yet. 23 years prior to the start of the story, their sibling, I think her name is Lisa, was said to have committed suicide and we haven't dove more deeply into it, but I'm also getting the feeling that her father was hiding a lot of secrets. And so, like I said, very, very early days in the story. So we still have a lot to uncover and I'm looking forward to it. So far, I've really loved everything that I've read by Diane Chamberlain. I've only read two books by her. They were all primarily historical fiction with a past and present timeline. This might have a past timeline as well, but this definitely seems more, but this definitely seems more like it's mystery, possibly with some suspense aspects to it than it does historical fiction. So I'm really interested to see what she could do with the story. I'm really intrigued so far and I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to be listening to that over the weekend. I don't know if I'm going to finish it this weekend. The plan is to go ahead and continue reading it. This is Easter weekend. We really don't have any plans. Probably just going to be running errands and doing chores like it is most weekends. We'll see how the day progresses. I will take you along with me wherever we go. I do know that we definitely have to grocery shop tonight. That is a must. So I'm going to go home, start making the grocery list, doing all the things, and I will check back in with you at the start of the next vlog, which will happen immediately after this. Talk to you later, guys. Thank you.